The area braced for the bad weather stretched from Cornwall all the way up to Cumbria, the whole west of, uh, of England and Wales indeed. And it does seem at this stage to be the Cornish coastline, the southern Cornish coastline, which is taking and bearing the worst of the flooding. We're just hearing that there are big problems in Lou uh, right now, popular fishing village, uh, coastal resort that people go to. Uh, Paul Zeth similarly uh, afflicted. Fowey, on the river Fowey there as well. St Ives as well, uh, very popular destination. Flooding problems in all those places. So here in Devon, uh, where it was anticipated the worst problems would be, there have been problems, but there's also a degree of preparedness which has stood them in really good stead. Just before I bring in Jason Farrell, I want to show you what we can see from here, because actually somewhere, occasionally, just bubbling here, you can see it, well, you can't see it, but you, <laughs> there were some bubbles coming up a, a, a while ago, take my word for it, a drain absolutely inundated right now. And you can see some of those enormous waves crashing up against the, the sea wall there, and all the while the area being lashed by rain, but don't be fooled, the rain uh, that we've all been afflicted by it in recent weeks is less of a problem than you might think. The rivers are bringing the water down from high ground, it's then funnelling out into the rivers and estuaries. But obviously the land is saturated, that's an ongoing problem. What's happening here today is a problem, of, the key feature of which is the tidal surge, the high spring tides whipped in uh, by the strong winds as well. Just see how some people live. Alex, come with me. I'll just show you uh, the view that one person is waking up to this morning. Good morning! Can you hear us? <laughs> Hello? Give us a wave. There you go. Extraordinary. Absolutely extraordinary. Let's bring in Jason Farrell. Uh, Jason, you were up here uh, all night. Uh, they were ready for this. Yeah. They were ready and they were planning for it, but they did have that uh, little bit of scepticism about whether it would be as bad as was predicted. Obviously, they were concerned. The COBRA meetings uh, with the government getting together, severe weather, weather warnings. 14 of them down here in the West Country. Uh, so this is clearly the area that's most likely to be at risk. But it seems that the conditions, the one factor that might have made it worse here was the, the wind, if it had been northeasterly, but it was southwesterly. And that seems to have helped Ilfracoon. But obviously, as you're saying, down on the, the south coast of Cornwall, I think- Well, any, we don't know well, the wind is down there. Well, do we? no, the problem is, in all this, as you know, Jason, you followed a few of these things around. It's such an inexact, oh, there we go. It's such an inexact science, isn't it? They've got to prepare for a huge area to be potentially affected. It, uh, yeah, I mean, it's a huge, it's a huge waves coming in here, and those waves hitting all around uh, the stuff. It, I think the thing is, yeah, at the moment, what we understand is that anywhere from sort of lands, lands end up to Plymouth uh, is going to be probably the worst affected area. But you're, you're right. I mean, you just never quite know. The winds are swirling as well. I mean, they seem to be changing direction. Uh, and the weather is constantly well, changing. Yep. We, you know, we're one minute it's hail and heavy, heavy rain on the very saturated night. 